Hello, David here at merchantaccounts.ca with another episode of the Vlogcast. So I was talking to a client the other day who sells custom lifts for ATVs, jet skis, and large equipment that you might have at home, and the stuff takes up tons of space. It's a really neat product, so you can put these lifts in your garage. But his project, project has a lot of challenges because these are really large and expensive items, and they're really difficult to ship. It's not like FedEx will take it. It has to go less than truckload. And some of the times, it's going to rural areas, so it's like this very complicated shipping logic as well as all the ways it can be customized for weights and things like that. So right now he's quoting every order that comes in over the phone and he's keying them into a virtual terminal. And I was talking to him about like doing the, the full Monty, building the full e-commerce website. He knows he needs a better solution. He's a little worried about the cost because it's obviously going to be a fair amount of money, but not really. What he's worried about is the amount of time it's going to take and the amount of effort to build this and whether he'll even get the result that he wants in the end. And he's like, well, how do I even go about this? So today I'm talking to Ryan Payne. Ryan's been a digital media executive for over 20 years. He's the founder of Lush Concepts and has worked with both large brands and smaller businesses over the past two decades. So I'm gonna pick Ryan's brain on these problems. Ryan, thanks for joining today. Happy to be here. So I'm just gonna start right here. I wanna start with who do you hire? Like, so I hear these terms, an agency, a web development company, designers. What does all that stuff mean? Yeah, yeah. Th those terms all describe essentially bits and pieces of bringing something online. So whether it's a website, it's an app, uh, custom development, template design, like there's, there's all these different moving parts. So depending on which term you're using, uh, it could mean more on the tech side of things, more on the creative side of things, but it's all part of the same overall goal of, of developing and designing something that someone will use to purchase your product or, or for you to make sales with. So an agency can be both technical and design, or does it have to be? Is it sometimes it's just a design agency? How does that because I'm thinking when people research, it's like they don't even know what they need. So that's, I guess, what I'm curious about. Yeah, there are agencies that do uh, just creative. And there's there's development shops or, or agencies as well that are uh, are just just development, just creative. So depending and there's there's agencies and companies that do both, which is where I, I my, my company falls falls into place. OK, so you do the coding and the design element of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then just to throw another uh, thing into the mix, there's there's the strategy and the planning and and all that stuff, which I'm sure we can we can get into uh, during our, our chat here. But yeah, there's there's all those all those moving parts. There's so much, and we we will get to that, and I want to get to that. I mean, we could tackle that one now. We'll, we'll get to it shortly. What I was going to ask about, and by the way, that's a great point. But one of the big concerns, basically, like at a high level, is the fear of failure, where someone invests a bunch of money into a big project, maybe a web. Let's talk about a website and it doesn't come together. Now, obviously it's not gonna to come together if it doesn't get finished, and I've heard of stuff like that happening, or it doesn't work. And when I mean it doesn't work, I don't mean like it's a 404 error, I mean it doesn't get the results you want. But how often do things like this happen? Now, obviously not with your Lush Concepts, but I mean in the industry, because I think it's a known thing that this types of, and I think good agencies, a lot of the times I'm guessing, fix the problems, for bad agents, it's like contractors. You ever have someone do work and then a real contract to come, <laughs> contractor has yeah. to come in and fix it? Does that type of stuff happen in, in your industry there? Yeah, and that's that's a good point. Like there's a, a ton of parallels between uh, something like getting, getting work done in your home, getting work done in your car. Uh, like it's really just like it's service-based work, right? So, uh, so yeah, like we inherit a, a lot of a lot of problem projects, I guess, or things where mm -hmm. uh, the project didn't work out for whatever reason, uh, and we're we're sent an email saying, "Hey, we've gone down the road uh, for two or three months, or or however long, and we're just not really happy," um, or the company is no longer uh, you know able to support what we're doing. Can you take it on? So, like, there's either projects that are sort of uh, in limbo or projects that are launched and uh, they, they need updates and they don't have anyone to kind of continue with the maintenance. So 
the, the internet and, and everything we're talking about has been around for, you know, like as long as we've been doing it and a little bit longer. Like, so it used to be that a lot of people needed a, a brand new website or, or an app or something like that. It's, it's sort of uh, been around long enough where a lot of people have something, but they either need to be updated or they need a refresh or whatever. So, uh, so there's, we, we uh, work with our clients on, on every kind of end of that spectrum. That makes, you know, I, this happens every episode, every single time somebody says something that's just blatantly obvious and I wouldn't have thought of it. And the ones already were three minutes in here. So I didn't, really, you're right. People don't, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Sometimes it's improvements and maintenance and as web sites or web applications, I guess, become increasingly, increasingly complex. Sometimes you're coming in to amend rather than blow it up and, and begin from ground zero over, over again. Yeah. And just like the, what we're talking about with getting work done in your home or something, there, there are good companies to work with and there's companies that are going to hold things together with duct tape or, you know, do, do questionable stuff. So a lot of the time, once, once we inherit something, uh, in, in this particular scenario, we'll look, we'll log into the server and, and, uh, or even just take a look at the code and do a bit of an audit just to see what solutions have been used. And, uh, there are certain red flags sometimes, uh, because we've been doing it long enough that we can take a look and say, Oh, this is either very out of date, which it sometimes that's a bit of an uphill battle. The longer something kind of sits on the shelf and collects dust, uh, Sometimes it's harder to breathe that make those new updates or or add new features to it. So, um, oh my gosh, I, I, so, it's totally true. Uh, you know, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. Oh no, no. Yeah, I, I was, I was just gonna say, uh, yeah. There's there's so many factors at play, and uh, yeah, we we really enjoy what we do. Uh, we've been doing it for as long as we have, so we've seen all those different types of scenarios. Definitely. You know, I, what, what, I apologize for cutting it over top. You're just reminding me of a story because there's PHP updates, right? And our database yeah. uh, on merchantaccounts.ca, not, not our transactional database, just our one that we get customer inquiries, very not important database. But uh, we needed to update PHP. And then it came to, oh, PHP, I think it was five, was outdated time to go to PHP seven. It's like, okay, I can update PHP. Well, not me, but we can get P updates PHP, nuclear explosion. It's just, it's just utter because they changed the way the calls happened to, I guess, uh, the MySQL uh, in P from PHP 5 to 7. And so I know exactly what you mean. The, the longer, the older it is, the more pain it can sometimes be doing the, the update, especially if what you have is discontinued or no longer what's at past end of life or whatever it's called in, in coding terms. A lot of the time what we do is after we launch a project, we recommend uh, just a, a little a little group of, or a little uh, package of, uh, of drawdown hours. And it, it doesn't need to be much, uh, but something that you set aside that whether it's an hour a week or a couple of hours a month that whether it's plugins, whether it's the server infrastructure, just those, those sort of things, you have someone that knows how to navigate all that stuff, just do a, a bit of a check and, and spend literally like, like an hour a week or something, just making sure that things are up to date, things are patched. Um, because there's, there's that inevitable time in the future that you're going to need to make updates and and it's that much more of an uphill battle, like we said, but there's also security patches and, and updates like that too. So if you're running a store or, or anything like that, you're gonna wanna make sure that all that stuff's up to date as well. And a lot of people from from what I've seen, small business owners or, or even mid-sized companies, uh, they try to do all that stuff internally, which if they've got the staff to do it, that's totally fine. But uh, uh, a lot of the time, if, if you're running your own business, uh, you're not an expert in that kind of stuff. And you, you might as well just, you might not either do it right or uh, you want to focus on your business. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be patching server, uh, you know, plugins and versions of Apache and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's a, yes, sometimes it's a hard lesson that. as a, 
as a business owner, <laughs> like you kind of outsourcing and delegating to people who are good at what they do. Like I'm not, I, I, I'm thankful and glad that I pay my accountant to do my books. Like I'm not good at that. And it would take away from what I'm doing at the end of the day. I wouldn't be able to, you know, get, get what I'm, get all the projects I'm working on and work on what I'm enjoying. I, I really doubt that most people enjoy doing all the maintenance work and, and things for their, for their stores or, or sites or anything like that. I mean, truer words cannot be spoken. Going back all the way to my, like out of high school, like I loved computers. My mom's like, well, why don't you get into computers? I'm like, because when you work with computers, people only call you when they're broken. They're fun when they work. So uh, I, <laughs> I know exactly, I know exactly what you mean. So, that's, and that's why know. a lot of people won't really maintain things because if it's working, it's it's invisible. If people don't think about it, so uh, so like planning and, and having this as part of of your business operations is a is a very important thing. Definitely, definitely. Now I'm going to circle back to something. Uh, so I know we, we talked about how not every project is built from scratch, but let's talk about the ones that are, or even maybe where they're not. Okay, so let's, I'm going to use the use case of my client with the, uh, with the lifts business here. So the question I want to ask is, do you have clients come to you and they haven't really mapped out what they want? Is it your job to give people what they're asking for? Or is it your job to help them understand what they actually need? Probably the latter. Uh, and, and there's a, a bit of an overlap with, with what they're asking for and, and what they might need. Um, so like I said earlier, uh, working with an expert who's somebody who does this every day, uh, they understand the best practices. They understand the latest and greatest technology. This is what they do every day. Just, just like, you know, payment, uh, payment gateways and, and all that stuff that you deal with, like you're, you live and breathe this, right? So dealing with someone who understands that stuff properly, uh, where I find the most success in projects is someone who really knows their business really well and sort of says, here are my general requirements uh, based on what you know, like what are your recommendations? And then we, and then we kind of work together collaboratively to figure out what the best solution is. That makes total sense. And I often say this, you could give a startup a million dollars for a website. Anybody that's watched my vlog will have heard this before. But my belief is about 950,000 of that million will be wasted because they don't know what their problem is. But, you know, give a million dollars to NASA, that could go pretty quickly. They have a lot of problems to figure out for some space shuttle they're working on. So how do people go about figuring out what they need if they don't know? Because you have to someday, I'm going to come talking from the new business owner or not a new business owner, or it could be an existing business moving online. Or maybe since everyone has a website now, maybe more monetizing to a more serious e-commerce website. The, I guess the question that I'm asking here is, how does someone go about figuring out what they need in order to give you criteria that you can work with to even start making helpful suggestions to them? Well, the... One of the great things about how mature the industry is these days is that there's a lot of really great examples of people who are doing things well. Uh, like you can you can look at the the peak and the pinnacle of whether it's Amazon, whether it's uh, like your favorite Shopify site that you you know buy things on all the all the time or 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 whatever. Um, there's there's a ton of e-commerce sites and just websites that do things really well. So. Uh, using those as a bit of an example of best practices, you can you can kind of look at things through that that lens and say, well, why why are why is this site successful? Why do people keep coming back to it? Why do I like this website? Uh, because there's a bit of a balance of putting yourself in the shoes of the consumer and someone who's going to be viewing uh, what you're putting out there, and also like the business owner as well, like. Uh, Whatever solution you're you're putting forward, it's it's got to both be useful and kind of quick and easy for the customer, but also on the flip side, from an administrative perspective, for you as the business owner as well. Like that's that's one thing that I think differentiates, and one is the, that's one of the main focuses of when we take on projects is like 
I'm very entrepreneurial. Like everyone that works within my company, uh, we've we've incubated little prototypes for ourselves just because this is what we love to do. So, um, so we'll figure out on all angles, like how do how do we build a solution that works for the people internally, but also the customers. So you're thinking of. Are, are you saying, Ryan, that it shouldn't just be the CEO or the owner that's making all the decisions, get feedback from all the employees, because they will all have touch points with the system? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's, well, I don't know if that's what I was saying, but it's a it's a good point and, it, and it's, uh, it's a valuable <laughs> thing to do. Uh, because like, if you're the marketing manager or you're the fulfillment, you know, uh, like agent or whatever, uh, you're seeing the business from a very narrow perspective and what your goals are within a larger business to to hit. So like we do, um, some of our clients are, are resorts and uh, destination travel tourism sort of places. And we're, let's say we're working with a marketing manager, they know like other destination sites. And we, we love how there's so many photos and there's uh it's just clean like that's that's the type of feedback we'll get but if you speak to other people okay. kind of key people within your organization the people who are handling the reservations for example the people who are um, mm -hmm. dealing with customer service uh, you might realize that our our contact forms are sending to the wrong email address or there's there's little touch points that everybody inevitably has to interact with and getting that full scope of all of those touch points is is a really useful exercise when trying to think about a refresh or like a rebuild or something like that it all factors into it that that makes sense and a little bit of what i'm hearing from you as well is imitation is one of the kindest forms of flattery. So don't go out and reinvent the wheel. Look at some of your best competitors and take some of the best things they're doing because it's a great starting point for what you can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you're, you're, you are actually to give yourself credit by going through that exercise, you are reinventing the wheel, but based on bits and pieces of other things that are working really, really well. So you're not, you don't have to blatantly copy things like, uh, but figuring out why something works like, yeah, like uh, all of the functionality and, and things like that, like is separate from your brand. Your brand is, is how you're going to be differentiating yourself and the tone and the look and feel. But if a shopping cart is really snappy and the buy flow is really quick, like that's the kind of stuff that's just invisible to the user. Like it's, it just needs to work. So, so that's the type of stuff you want to look to try to try to mimic. What a, honestly a great segue, because here's one of the questions I have right on the tail of that. So nobody or very few people are an expert at everything online. So just like high level, right? SEO or social media marketing are going to make people aware of the site. Design that's trustworthy is going to communicate a message to the user that greets them when they visit the site. Co sales copy that's effective is going to engage the user to make sure that they actually want to know more. Then a checkout flow is going to bring them into a sales funnel that's hopefully effective. And then an e-commerce engine that allows them to purchase. A system to recover click-offs if people abandon during the checkout flow. Those abandoned orders. And on and on and on. And this is just high level. Like this yeah. is literally high level stuff. We're not even drilling in here. There's so many components and I'm a professional at this. I've done it for 20 years. So how does a typical business owner even begin to put this together? So you talked about going to those other sites, but like if you have someone coming to you and you, you know about all this glue that has to happen in the, in the background, how do you help a non-expert make sure these things get achieved? Yeah, that's, that's the question right there. Um, we will often, when we're taking on a project, we'll establish what the scope is and what we want to achieve. Because there's everything can be kind of boiled down to like, we need to increase sales. We need to optimize our site better for mobile. Like whatever the, the key revelation was of why they're having the conversation with you or with me, that's sort of the touchstone. And all the different components that you, that you mentioned, the, the abandoned cart, the SEO, those are all just tools um, that will help sort of uh, 
bring everything together to to enhance and and to kind of meet that objective of what what everyone is kind of going to be working on for the next month to you know six months or however long the project is uh so it 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 definitely there's that there's that strategy and kind of planning in the beginning what are what's everyone here to do what's the purpose and as the person who's been doing it for 20 years or or you know that that's the subject matter expert we're bringing to the table all those kind of tools and and what we've seen work in the past and uh and and what we know works that's that's interesting and i I think you also made me realize something else about this. Just just because you know you don't see things easily through another person's eyes, and you made me realize that I think part of your role is customer education. Because let's be honest, if you're going to have an e-commerce business, you can't rely on everyone else just to be the expert all the time. So I think you're listening to the answer that you just gave me, also educating your customers so that your customer from the first day they met you to one year after the project began and maybe even well after it's finalized, uh, there's probably, you're making them aware of things that they, that they need to be aware of to help achieve those goals from the sounds of it. Yep, exactly. And those are the best partnerships. Like where things sometimes get tricky is working with someone who doesn't understand the value that you can, you can bring. Uh, like we want to, position ourselves as a bit of an extension of their business. We're just the, the web company, the design company that can can best execute what those objectives are for the web or for mobile or whatever. Um, like my wife and I just yesterday, we had uh, an organization expert come into our place. And you think something like that is so silly. Like, okay, we, we live in our, in our condo and, uh, you know, but just optimizing the space. Like we've been in, we've been here for for twelve years. The amount of stuff that you collect in twelve years, we have way more stuff now than we did when we moved in here. But they deal mm -hmm. with this every day, so they can look in a shelf and say, "Oh yeah, we're gonna put in we're gonna put in drawers here under the cabinets, and we're gonna put in this mechanism that turns around so you can utilize the space all the way back here." And you know, and it's stuff like this is what you do every day. Yes. Like just, just have at it. Like, let us know what we need. We'll, we'll assess like what we think we need, what, what we don't need. Like we know our space best, you know, organization best. Right. So, so it's like those parallels, like we'll like, we're not just going to blindly do everything they say we're going to do. We're going to take the recommendations and through our understanding of our, of our condo, we're going to pick what we think works best for us and we're probably going to get a really good solution out of it hopefully definitely first of all in my I, I, never even occurred to me to do that i need that service you're gonna to have to send me that person's info <laughs> i'll keep <laughs> but, you posted uh, yeah so thank you so it sounds like respect the expertise respect respect expertise because it's hard one and even though some things can can seem easy uh, you know, it's like one of those memes on the internet, you know, like watching someone scaling a fish or something, which I've never done. And if I did, it'd probably take me five minutes, but you watch an expert, it's like, and it's done in two seconds. So I, I think I, I very much agree with, with what you're saying. So it's, a, it's about finding the right experts and then relying on them, listening them and letting them guide you on your journey. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because... Okay, cool. so, sometimes the, the most difficult projects looking looking over the the span of my career is like working with someone especially early uh early in my career you, you a project would come up and someone would say we want x y and z done and we would do exactly what they said and then and then it it either didn't work properly or it's like oh i didn't i didn't mean this or that um but uh through through like experience and just doing this for years and years and years uh it's almost like i've seen it all you know and i'm sure you can probably say the same like there's the odd time that someone will will present you with a problem and you're like huh this is a bit of a unique one but it's sort of like this project we did and there's bits and pieces of this and through bringing a bunch of 
previous uh, projects together and, and experiences, like you're like, yeah, we, we can we can provide that solution. And here's the best way to do it. So Ryan, I'm going to ask this question. What mistakes can you make when you're working with your agency slash developer slash designer? Well, I think we might have touched on it earlier and just not really allowing or having enough time to plan uh, to to get those those planning documents and what the overall objectives are uh, ahead of time. So painting a room or, or doing any of that kind of stuff, it, the prep work is so critical. So trying to engage and work with uh, uh, a partner with without that that plan uh, is, uh, is, is a tricky thing and you're not going to be able to optimize the budget and, and everyone's time is as good as you could uh, unless you had some good planning ahead of time. So Ryan, one of the questions I ask almost all our guests is what is your best secret tip for e-commerce businesses? Now, it doesn't just have to be for e-commerce. Sometimes it can be like a general business tip, but what is your best tip or tidbit you could give to business owners that are watching this video? Well, I'm going to I'm going to say it again. It's it's planning. It's uh, getting getting the objectives set in the beginning and uh, and just sticking to them and making everybody accountable to those to those original objectives and getting everything planned ahead of time. That's an excellent tip. Well, Ryan, it was really great having you on today. Uh, one thing that I'm hoping you can do is tell our viewers where they can get in touch with you. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, Lush.io, L-U-S-H dot I-O is, uh, is the website. Oh, that's a great domain. A and um, yeah, I, I, I jumped on the I-O uh, bandwagon uh, early on. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's that input output sort of uh, a lot of tech companies adopted the the dot io so uh so yeah lush lush.io mm -hmm. is uh it's got all the and case studies and um sort of um just what what we've been doing and uh and our services and and how to get in touch with us and what just for viewers benefit what what are your areas of expertise or what what is the areas of ex main ex what's the main focus of lush well the way i describe us is that we're a design-led technology studio so in the beginning, we were talking about web developers, uh, design agencies, the, the word agency in general. Uh, so we, uh, like, I, I come from a, a design background, but I've also been in tech for a long time. So we are sort of that in between. We understand tech and we understand design. So we're not just a bunch of coders and we're not designers who don't understand how something needs to work on a phone on a big screen TV, on, on everything. We're a design-led technology studio. So just bringing that, that creativity and, and human focus into, uh, into design and, uh, and to tech. That's, that's great, Ryan. And I, I will honestly say that I got some really interesting insight. And uh, thanks for joining today. It's, it's been a blast. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ryan.